Mega evolutions are coming back. Right? Yeah, right? Yeah, wow. Oh, you guys are excited about that. Wow, yeah. No, I, I am too. I, I think they're great. Super fun. Great, great. But it's it's not all guns and roses. Oh, sorry, it's not all... It's not all... That was close. It's not all suns and roses in the mega evolution um, area. Yeah, things things can be bad, actually. Things can be... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you should be, you should be panicking because it's scary. And you know why? Well, I, I don't know why, just yet. That's why we're gonna watch The Problem with Mega Pokemon by Moxie Boosted. Very excited to find out why. Very excited for Mega Evolutions to return. Everyone loves Mega Pokemon. It's true, everybody. There's not a single person. There's no one, there's no one, no one on Twitter.com that doesn't love Mega Evolution. Everyone is super happy all of the time. They're just really cool upgrades to existing fan favorites, like Absol, Scizor, and Fly. Actually, we don't really talk about that one. My point is... Oh, that was... Did anyone, did anyone just see tomorrow? Mega Pokemon were one of the most well-received generational gimmicks Game Freak has ever come up with. These Mega Pokemon were so popular that they're actually the only gimmick that managed to escape its home generation by being present both in Generation 6's Kalos and Generation 7's Alola. Beyond I'm gonna give my theory, my game theory. Sorry, Matt Pat, rest in peace, the poor guy. He's not dead. He just like has a kid now or something. But I'm gonna give my game theory as to why I think Mega Pokemon are so beloved. And I was gonna do it later. I'm just gonna do it now. It's vibes. It's just vibes. Think about it. Mega Evolution are cool. They take Pokemon that are already fan favorites, like Moxie Boosted said, makes them strong, gives them new abilities, makes them viable. Gives them sick new design. Is there a Mega Evolution design that doesn't look cool? Yeah, Mega Slowbros does look good. I don't care what you say. It's all based on vibes. Z moves and Z moves didn't have the vibes. Gigantamax, Dynamax didn't have the vibes. Terrestrialization looks goofy. But I mean, people like terrestrialization. I, I think terrestrialization is kind of cool. But Mega Evolution has always hit the right vibes that makes people just go, ooh, yeah. Ooh, I like that one. Beyond that, Megas are so popular that they still remain a mechanic in the spin-off games like Pokemon Go and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Many players expected them to be a core mechanic of all games going forward, but in Generation 8, Game Freak decided to bench the whole mechanic in favor of Dynamax? I really think that Game Freak put Dynamax in a pretty impossible to win situation by removing Mega Evolutions and introducing this as the replacement to Mega Evolutions, because look at Gigantamaxes. They're basically what a Mega Evolution would look like if it had been released in generation six or seven. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Megas, but I would have traded them for Dynamax any day. That mechanic's garbage. And we had- yeah, People did not like Dynamax. I, however, I'm a big fan of Kaijus. I like Godzilla. Godzilla? Godzilla? I haven't seen them return since then. Well, that was until the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA, or Z2A, or ZAR or something. Anyways, at the end of the trailer, we were shown the Mega Evolution symbol, basically confirming that it'll be a mechanic in the game. While the Legends games are considered main series games by Game Freak, it should be noted that Legends Arceus lacked any sort of multiplayer, including PvP, which ha they need to change that. Oh my god, they need to change that. Game Freak, I'm gonna get on the phone with them right now. Game Freak, hello. Hello, Game Freak. Is this... I don't... There's no one there. It's my cat, Janichi Masuda. I, I need you to just just put it... Just put it a little bit of online battling. And how are we gonna do the then we fight battles without online battling? How are we gonna do it, Game Freak? How is there gonna be VGC? It happens to be the only place where Megas are somewhat controversial. While many players enjoy Megas in battles, there are also some who believe that Megas aren't healthy for competitive play. So... To yeah, I mean, they're super over centralizing incredibly powerful have you seen primal groudon and primal kyogre they completely took over the meta game 100 percent they absolutely destroy normal regular pokemon today let's discuss whether or not mega should return to generation 10 and beyond if you enjoy this video at any point in time be sure to leave a like and subscribe because i make tons of competitive pokemon oh right then like as a matter of fact you should just subscribe right now because i have a playlist full of but i already did you to check out right after Whoa, look at all these videos that you can watch after you watch this one on Moxie Boost's channel that you can go and watch like right after this with the link in the description that you should click to this video. And if you think you're already subscribed, do me a favor and double check because okay. only about half yep. of my viewers actually are. So oh, definitely, Megas. De definitely says the button there. What exactly do they do mechanically? Obviously, even casual players know that Mega Pokemon get a design overhaul and usually get a new ability or typing. But when we check under the hood, what's really going on? Well, all Pokemon have a base stat total, which is simply the sum of all their stats. Take, for example, Binette, who has a base stat total of a measly 455. Upon 
base stat total not even worth looking at, not even worth sniffing at. Mega Evolution, all Megas gain 100 more base stat points, meaning that Mega Binet has a total of 555. This stance just barely stronger than a star. This total is distributed among the Pokemon's stats to rework how strong, bulky, and fast they are. This, in tandem with the new ability, will basically change the entire Pokemon's identity from a battling perspective. In Binet's case, it goes from a very weak physical attacking ghost type with a sleep immunity to a very I like how it says kind of weak when it's 115 attack, which is pretty good. A powerful physical attacker that can spam priority burn, taunt, and destiny bond. Another pretty interesting example. Which is a crazy, Banette is such an interesting mega evolution because it has so much attack, but it just doesn't have the speed. So you're reliant on priority moves. <laughs> and most of your priority moves are status which doesn't use your attack. It's a very interesting Pokemon. Old Pokemon getting a buff through Megas would have to be Mega Mawile. I love, okay, Mega Mawile is my favorite Mega Evolution. I absolutely love it. It made me so happy when I got a Mega Evolution. It has two mouths now. It has three mouths now. But before Mawile had the best single type combination in the game of Fairy Steel, it just didn't have the stats to be useful at all. Meanwhile, it was Mega so Mawile bad. maintains that incredible typing, but becomes pretty bulky and gains huge power on top of 105 base attack stat, meaning that it has an effective attack stat of 678. Much Ooh, That is uh, pretty big higher than any other pokemon in the game clearly megas are a great opportunity to buff old weaker pokemon the issue arises when game freak realizes that megas for already popular strong pokemon would sell a lot of plushies that's how we ended up with i have that oh my god i have that yep good old razaquaz here good old raz can't can't forget good old razaquaz looking pretty good they should make this real they should make Pokemon Fusion real. They should buy Infinite Fusion and make it real. Good old, good old Raza Quaz. The likes of Mega Mewtwo, Salamence, Gengar, and of course, Rayquaza. All of these designs are sick though, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I dropped $30 in a plush of this dude. But from a game balance perspective, it completely defeats the positives of using Megas to buff weaker Pokemon by raising the power level of the game way above where it was before. How is my man Mega Beedrill supposed to click the world's strongest U-turn when it's getting one shot by Mega Scizor's bullet punch? Yeah, that is true. Also, Beedrill is so, so frail. It's ridiculous. Beedrill could be so interesting and useful, but there's so few situations that you can really just let it do its thing. With adaptability and a billion attack points that it has, it could be so strong. But my second question is, why does Beedrill not get Mega Horn? Oh, because it's drills are drills, not horns, Daniel. Yeah, sh shut up, shut Who up. decided Scizor needed a Mega? It's literally one of the best Pokemon in Gen 5 singles. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that I really love the idea of Mega Pokemon, but there's just no way Game Freak will have the restraint to only give them to the Pokemon that need a buff in power. If we want to take a look at how Megas have fared in a competitive landscape, we can see that Pokemon which were already historically strong that received Megas are somewhat overrepresented in the results. Salmons went from a powerful Dragon type with access to Intimidate to a powerful Dragon type with access to Intimidate that can instantly get faster bulkier, stronger, and turn double edge into a flying type move. Okay, to be fair, I didn't think that it would just get 10 special attack. It gets plus 50 in defense. I did not know Salamence's Mega Evolution was, was like that. Also, Aerialate is an insane buff, especially with double edge. Ooh, granting it a boost with stab. With stats like that, it's no wonder Mega Salamence was a really strong pick in Ooh, early and mid VGC 2016, even among the threats like Primal Kyogre and Groudon. The exception to this rule would definitely have to be Mega Kangaskhan, though. Kangaskhan is historically not that strong in competitive Pokemon, but... Oh, and then it got strong. Mega Kangaskhan in Generation 6 was ridiculously strong. Not only did it have access to the phenomenal pure normal typing with Stab on Fake Out and Return, but it had this exclusive ability of Parental Bond, which made it so all of Mega Kangaskhan's single target moves would hit twice. One didn't they also nerf it afterwards as well? At full power from Kangaskhan, and once again at half power from the little baby that pops out of its pouch. Which implies that the mother is encouraging the baby to not only do violence, but participate in a battle in which it can be at least knocked out, give a concussion, potentially killed by the legendary Pokemon that are around it. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I would like to put forward that any Mega Kangaskhan is actually a terrible, terrible parent, should be immediately revoked of their parentship by Child Protective Services, and then we don't have to worry about Mega Kangaskhan because there are no children anymore. Also, I have a question. What happens if you use a Kangaskhanite on a Kangaskhan that doesn't have a child? Does it just materialize one? Or does it start crying for the offspring that it never had? Besides all of the negatives I'm gonna state about Mega Pokemon, I do need to put it out there. The designs are absolute bangers. I mean, having the Mega have the baby pop out and fight with you, that was like a stroke of pure genius. I, I can't overstate that at all. Getting also probably morally bad.
Probably. I don't know. I'm not Mr. Morals over here, okay? Back to the point, this ability means that the move Return goes from a 102 base power move to 153 base power move before Stab and bypasses both Focus Sash and Sturdy. You can And has two chances to crit, really, is if you think about that, too. And if you pop a sub with the first hit, you also get damage on the Pokemon with the second hit. You see how this might be a bit much from a game balance perspective, right? Bear in mind that this also at one point had access to the move Power Up Punch, which was effectively a Swords Dance that would chunk Pokemon for decent damage since Kangaskhan would get the boost twice. This Pokemon was so powerful that it would- And the second punch gets the buff from the first attack boost, so the second punch always does more damage. On six of the top eight teams at the 2015 World Championships. Oh, and look at these teams! Wow! This is a bit of a genie! <laughs> bit of a genie year. All these Japanese teams. I like how the Japanese flag on the white background just doesn't exist. <laughs> and was nerfed in Generation 7 by losing Power Up Punch and having Parental Bond's second hit nerfed to 25% power instead of 50%. As a side note, I should really use my platform to clear up some misinformation regarding the 2015 VGC season. The Chalk Core of Cresselia, Heatran, Amoongus, Landorus, and Mega Kangaskhan Oh god, that's a disgusting lineup. I hate it. Oh, I really don't like that. Oh, too bulky. Wasn't actually terribly popular in any of the tournaments leading up to Worlds 2015. This team broke out around the time of Worlds and seriously popped off at the event in the hands of a few Japanese players who decided to run it. Which is why if you zoom out from just top 8, you'll see it kind of destroys the narrative that all VGC players use the same teams even nearly 10 years ago. Take that's right, Moxie boosted using facts and logic to destroy the to destroy the the narrative. Your 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 narrative's done. The one that you had about the 2015 worlds, it's dead now. You just been owned. How do you feel? Take a look. Even just outside of top eight, we can see a Mega Venusaur and Scrafty. I don't know. Oh, <gasps> Mega Venusaur and Scrafty. I love them. Oh, uh, okay. You know what, Luca? You're pretty cool. That's just food for thought. But while one Mega Pokemon might not truly be over centralizing, it should be noted that Mega Pokemon were unique in the way they limited team building, where Z moves could be run by any Pokemon. Dynamax could be activated even on niche picks like Durant, and Terrastalization truly allows for bottom tiers like Articuno to have their moment in the limelight, Megas were a pretty specific pool of Pokemon. You see this, at least one or two of these Pokemon would be on your team or you'd be at some kind of disadvantage during the battle. While some might say that this isn't really a negative since you could just choose to not use a Megastone on your team, it- Yeah, but like what are you, an idiot? <laughs> Why would you not run a Megastone? It truly is disadvantageous to not have one of these Pokemon. They sort of function as a team captain or just like the cornerstone of your team. Teams with Mega Charizard Y would support Charizard to Some allow teams. to have the proper speed control to click Heat Wave safely and pair it with chlorophyll abusers like Venusaur to sleep opposing threats. Yes, you could alternatively use Ninetales for this role, but Charizard- What are you doing? Come on, come on. Ninetales? With this Mega Charizard Y? Come on, what are you doing? Y was practically a mini legendary Pokemon on your team, so you'd have to be crazy to choose Ninetales over it. Even niche Megas like Mega Manectric were integral for allowing their team to function in a very specific way. Since It's so fast. Also, it gets double in- Does it get double intimidate? Does Manectric naturally have Intimidate? Maybe it doesn't. These Pokemon effectively have two abilities. On lead, Manectric would be able to provide support for the Tapu Fini by redirecting electric moves- Oh, Lightning Rod, that's what it was. It's not Double Intimidate. ...into itself with Lightning Rod. Then, when the time is right, Mega Evolve to intimidate an opposing Kartana and allow Tapu Fini to live the hit. Really, Mega Pokemon weren't optional if you were trying to win consistently. I know I'm being a bit of a downer with Mega Pokemon, but I'm just giving my perspective on it from a competitive player's point of view. So, let me get through this last point and I promise we'll talk about some of the positive ways Megas can be used in the franchise. Okay. Stick with me here. Mega Pokemon okay. were bad for game balance in the long run. This but they were great for the vibes. This is because the existence of Megas were sort of a bandage for an issue caused by power creep. Mega Pidgeot was a fairly okay Pokemon. Okay, so we need to solve the power creep. How can we solve the power creep? Well, we're going to power creep so much harder than we ever have before. It's going to be so... We're not going to creep. We're gonna skip, leap, and jump. Pokemon, and as long as Megas remained in the game, no one would really complain about regular Pidgeot being trash since you could always just Mega Evolve it. I mean, it kept me satisfied, but it's not realistic for every Pokemon to gain a Mega Evolution even over the course of 10 or more generations. Mega Pokemon were given to bottom tiers like Ampharos and Pidgeot, granting them temporary viability. Wait, Am Ampharos is bottom tier? I guess it wasn't great. I love Ampharos though. Two generations, but once they were removed, these two- You know what? They need to give Maractus a Mega Evolution. Why haven't they given Maractus? You, Game Freak, Legend Zaza, Maractus. 
So I'm saying, yeah, if you're not going to give it to Arcanine, which you're probably not going to, give it to Maractus. It went back to being completely unviable. Had Game Freak just decided to give these two flat stat buffs, move pool buffs, or even ability buffs not tied to a generational mechanic, those buffs would remain to this day. And it seems that Game Freak for a period of time adopted this philosophy, that there wasn't a need to buff old Pokemon since they'd probably eventually get a Mega Evolution as long as they got around to it. You can see that nowadays, without Megas in the game, Game Freak is more open to giving huge buffs to older Pokemon like Shiftry who gained Wind Rider, Empoleon who gained a new ability in Competitive instead of Defiant, and even the Inner Focus rework that allowed for tons of physical attackers from old generations to still be strong today. I honestly believe the inner focus rework was being immune to intimidate, I think, wasn't it? You can correct me if I'm wrong on this. Had Megas just been foregone in favor of rebalancing the game, many of the low tier Pokemon today would be a lot stronger. But then again, these designs absolutely slap and it'd be a waste not to use them. I know, right? Like, oh, they're so cool. Like the hair, the Pidgeot looks so awesome. There's Mega Mawile, three bounds. Imagine, three bounds. So how can Mega Pokemon be implemented in a way that doesn't mess with game balance? I think first off, we remove the really ridiculous ones like Prammel, Groudon, Kyoga, Mega, Razaquaz, Mega Mewtwo. Do they need Mega Evolutions? Truly? I mean, they're going to be banned from competitive play regardless. They can just like focus on giving them to the weaker mons, the ones that aren't as cool or good. I'm partial to Mega Pokemon remaining a staple of the single player games, like the Pokemon Legends series. The fact that these games are single player only is a huge reason I found it so enjoyable. I didn't need to worry about optimizing my team for battling other players or constructing the absolutely best moveset possible. I was able to just run some old favorites of mine, like Carnivine, which I'd never be able to run in an online situation. Okay, but also give Carnivine a Mega Evolution too. The end game reward for these games as well was really cool as the Legends plate made it so Arceus would be able to hit everything for super effective always. This obviously wouldn't be allowed in a PvP setting. Imagine switching in your normal resist only to get hit by fighting type judgment. In this environment though, I would- Okay, this thing is not going to be in competitive regardless. I mean, maybe Ubers, but it would probably be, it would probably be in anything goes, which is what happens when you ban a Pokemon from Ubers. Mega Rayquaza was the first Pokemon that was banned from Ubers because it was too strong. I absolutely love for Megas to return, since in a single player game, there's not really as strict of a reason to need to balance them. It's honestly kind of a no-brainer that Game Freak would seize this opportunity to reintroduce them into the franchise given the success of the single player Pokemon Legends Arceus. That and it helps them get the rest of the Mega Evolution merch off the shelf. Somewhere in a Walmart warehouse, there's like a hundred Mega Bracelets that were just never sold rotting. But let's say that Game Freak decides to reintroduce Megas not only to Pokemon Legends ZA, but also into Generation 10. Well, Which I kind of hope they do, but at the same time, there's always going to be this generational gimmick. There's always going to be this new selling point, this new thing to look at and be like, ooh, look at the shiny new thing that we can do. There's always going to be the new terrestrialization. Terrestrialization probably isn't going to be in the next generation, even though it's a really, really cool idea. They always move on to something else. So I really don't think that Mega Evolutions would return in the the online competitive scene. Maybe they would be in the single player games and be banned from VGC. Who knows? Well, generation 7 proved to us that Megas can coexist with other mechanics like Z moves. So I could reasonably believe that Game Freak could include Megas with whatever new thing we end up getting in Generation 10. But a few steps need to be taken to avoid having Megas be an over centralizing mechanic like they were in years past. If Megas return, I think that the flat 100 base stat increase across the board shouldn't be standard. There was no oh, reason okay. for Mega Metagross to have 700 base stat total. A sta yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous. With Tough Claws and Priority and Insane Defense and Insane Speed and Meteor Mash, what are we doing? What are we getting up to now? Are we just having fun? Are we just goofing around at this point? Every What's happening? Implemented to these stronger Megas to give them minor buffs in exchange for not being able to run an item. That inability to run items like the Safety Goggles leftovers or a life orb should feel like a real drawback and make people second guess if they prefer the mega or the item Beyond the only mega evolution i can really think of that truly had a drawback was mega garchomp because it reduced your speed which made it less viable to use in most situations than just regular garchomp even though it became so much stronger a regular garchomp running something like a choice scarf that would just be able to go first the majority of the time was just more viable in terms of competitive usage than Mega Garchomp was. Speed is a massive factor in these battles, and that's a good way to, to kind of nerf a Mega Evolution while still keeping it as its own thing. It just makes it do different things. Mega Garchomp was more bulky, it can hit harder, but sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you need just speed. And Garchomp already had enough attack anyway to where just having more wasn't really necessary. Beyond that, if new Megas were introduced, the vast majority of them should go to the lower tier Pokemon that need a bit of a buff in power. Obviously, 
Yeah, we're, we're hopping on this flagon thing a lot. We can still do something for the fans of the powerful Pokemon like Ursaluna, but whatever Megas those Pokemon end up getting, they should really just be limited to minor upgrades. And also, Ursaluna already has like an alternate form anyway, so does it really, does it truly need to make evolution when it's already had an alternate form? It's already got Blood Moon Ursaluna, which is already sick. I know you need to sell merch Pokemon, so go ahead and give us like Mega Charizard Z or whatever like busted Pokemon needs to have that extra little bit of money behind it. Finally, I genuinely think that with the advent of open team sheets being standard for the VGC format, items should be visible on in-game team preview. This would allow for both players to identify which Pokemon was holding the Mega Stone more reliably and allow for open team sheets formats to be introduced in some way to the in-game ladder, bridging the gap between the competitive and casual players just a bit. If even just one or two of these steps were taken when reintroducing Megas to PvP battles, I think that Megas could be a great introduction to the game. So what's the verdict? Should Megas return? If you ask me, I, I think, think they so. should be a staple of purely the single player games, but okay. they need to be heavily reworked True. in any games that plan to include ranked competitive battles. But what yeah, do you I think can, about Mega I can Pokemon? get down with that. I mean, some a lot of competitive players don't like Mega Evolution that much because it was so over-centralized. But the majority of the players that are casual players absolutely love it. And that's why they're bringing it back because the majority of the people that play Pokemon are casual players. They don't play competitive. It's a great way to sell merch. And you know the Pokemon company loves selling merch. The majority of the Pokemon company's money comes from merchandise. It doesn't come from game sales. It doesn't come from anime or TCG. It comes from plushies and clothes and little trinkets that you can get. That's where the money is. I want to know your opinion in the comment section down below. Should they return to competitive play or are you fine with just keeping them in single player games and spinoffs? Let me know. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It means the world to me. If you want also go and watch the rest of Moxie Boost's video right now. Just look at all these videos that you can see. There's the problem with Flutter Main. He tried to use a Pikachu team. Modern Pokemon abilities are ridiculous. I'm not going to react to those videos. So please go and watch them yourself over on Moxie Boost's channel. Thank you so much for allowing me to react to your videos, by the way. I really appreciate that. And if you want to see more of my dumb face, you can always subscribe here as well.